It's been five years since Comethazine dropped his biggest song to date, Walk With Lyrical Lemonade. He's been on a real steady decline and it got to a point where his own Reddit just became a place for people to hate on him. One comment said, bro dropped a mediocre album without any communication. There go completely out the grid without communicating or announcing anything. Comethazine music career started years ago during the SoundCloud era, but the way his career started wasn't in the regular way. Throughout the years, he had always listened to music. And one day, he got to thinking, I got $200 in a mic. Let's try to rap. I ain't never made no music before, but we gonna see how it go. And Comethazine said this to HXL when he first blew up. I actually used to write. I flowed on some Joey Badass type music, but that wasn't going nowhere for me. So I was like, let me do some ignorant stuff. See this work. I didn't have a game or none, so I was always in my room just recording. But my mama, she hated it. She would always yell at me, tell me to shut up. And I went to night school, so I would sleep all day and record all night after school. Crazy to think that he knew the internet thrived off negativity all the way back in like 2017, 2016. But back then, Comethazine had the methods. So back in 2018, it was this feature on SoundCloud and I don't know if it's still available or not, but basically you could switch the audio files to a song after it was already uploaded. But what happened was the SoundCloud page uploaded Bounce Out With That by Not Mirror on the SoundCloud page, right? They let that sit for a minute. It's getting strings and strings and strings because that song hot at the time. And when the time was right, the song somehow got switched to a Comethazine song, making it seem like that was his song getting all them streams, in turn, making the song get pushed more on SoundCloud. And then that's also playing on the human brain. It's stupid. They see a high number, they go click on it. I'm talking about it went number one because of the song switch. And at first, people didn't realize until they started doing some digging. They realized that this one song had way more streams than any other song he had on the SoundCloud. And it was only a matter of time before the Reddit detective started tearing his whole little operation apart. Reddit post said this, so I noticed this rapper Comethazine a while back and honestly, I've been a big fan of his music. It ain't nothing special, but he makes some nice SoundCloud as trap bangers that I can do. Well today, I saw some people tweeting about his new song that had reached number one on the SoundCloud charts, but wait a minute. I've been following this guy for a minute and I ain't never seen him get more than like 200k plays on the song. That's weird. So I go look around. Sure enough, his song Bands is number one on SoundCloud. 10 million plays in the last 15 days and 3 million plays this one week. And with all that information he gave us, he started doing some digging. And somehow he stumbled upon YBN and Amir Post, right? He had posted his song, bounced out with that, linked to the SoundCloud version of the song. And can you guess where that link took the man on Reddit? straight to Comethazine's song band. And this situation was getting so big at the time, it was whole articles on Comethazine. One point, Complex reached out to Comethazine peoples and they said this. I wish we could take credit for this because it gave Cole a lot of looks, but we think this was just a case of a fan who really wanted to get Cole some plays any way possible. We're appreciative of the look, Bowski, coming soon. But look, if y'all ever heard a Comethazine song, y'all hear how he talk and act. I don't think this was a fan that did this. It was most likely him, but that ain't a fact. We don't know. But really, think about it. He was basically a nobody at the time, and all this press he was getting was going to help him, whether it put him in a good light or not. And I say this because articles about an artist going to make people want to go check out the music. And people was liking it. And the thing is, Comethazine was really built for success. Something I didn't even mention yet was just a few months back before all of this. October 2017, he ended up signing a contract with Alamo Records, which is going to play a big part of his career later on. But all this going on at the time came with some. Some not so positive. He was getting compared to every other rapper that was hot at that time. Now, the question is, Comethazine and Take do they sound the same? Let's talk about it. But you might have heard about the Take and Comethazine comparisons. These guys have been getting compared to each other for some time now. But I think Comethazine is the person who's been a little more the victim in this case. I remember when he was first coming up and the he sounds like Take comments were constantly being brought up. And to be honest, they do sound a lot. You can hear the Take influence in Comethazine music hit. And a lot of the internet was going right along with that. One red post from five years ago said this, is it just me or Comethazine sound exactly like Take I'm not a fan or something, but bro, they sound alike. Both of them sound like each other and they both rap around the same thing. Another Reddit post, Comethazine is Take and in Smoke Perk's love child. And I ain't even mentioned that yet. Smoke Perk comparisons. They was coming in just as hot as the Take comparisons. And with the whole internet kind of coming at them saying he sound like this person and this person, they got to him. He had to get online speaking in mind. When I posted that video, Planning piano and me rapping bands live. Are you talking about was you sound like TK? I don't rapping live. Do I sound like another live, bro? Like, no, this is my voice, obviously. You know, at the end of the day, 
with Tay K. We smoke per. Y'all can me too. Y'all don't even know. Yeah, don't nobody own a flow. Don't nobody own a voice. Now I f with Tay K. Yeah, but these goddamn comparisons gotta stop. Let me rock. Let me keep putting VVSs on my neck. Let me get a bust down, ho. I mean, nigga, let me make my music, bitch. And with y'all seeing the kind of person he was, it was only like a matter of time before more problems came his way. But before any of that, he was still going crazy. He had Lyrical Lemonade on his side in 2018, and that was the year where they pretty much put Juice World on the map. So he was hot. And for years after this, he was just consistently dropping good music that people actually cared about. He announced he was dropping. People always would come to it. But as time went on, more and more problems would start to come in his life. For even more context, if you don't know, he would get on these beats and rap like he was so hard. Basically just murder up. And one day, out of the blue, a video dropped of him from where he was a little kid doing the Disney Channel audition where he was fake crying and doing all this acting. And when it came out to the internet, he started to get cooked. And I'm talking about it was bad. It was even streamers reacting to it. But eventually, he did come out responding. The damage was already done though. And anyone who had problems with Comethazine had ammo. But fast forward a few months, Comethazine out here doing a little promo run for his album. And he was real public about his stance on features. A stance on features that was really gonna hurt his career over time. I ain't even speak on it yet, but Comethazine was real anti-feature. Going through all of his projects, you don't see a single feature. And his fans hated that about him. They felt like he was limiting himself so much by not doing these features, cause he definitely had the access. Think about who he was signed to. He was signed to Alamo Records. And you know who else is signed to Alamo Records? Lil Dirt, Rod Wave, all these other artists. So if he would have went to his label and was like, look, can I get a Dirk or Rod feature? Really sit and think how good that could have did his career. What if he linked up with Dirk and dropped the hit? But at the end of the day, it's his career. If he don't want to do a feature, he don't got to do a feature and that's fine. But still, he was always anti-feature. And when he announced that his next project wasn't going to have no features, his fans was mad. But something else came from this situation. Something else came from this one little post. So after he posted what he posted, another rapper that go by the name Sos Moolah came out saying the exact same thing. That's basically like, look, my next project ain't gonna have no features. And when Comethazine seen this, he was feeling like Sos was meat right. And he called him something real disrespectful. But before I explain that to you, make sure you join the Discord. Link is at the top of the description. Comethazine called Sos Moolah 6 9 little brother. And if you don't know, 6 9 and Comethazine had some beef back in the day. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on it, but in the original version of Gummo, 6 9 dissed Sos Moolah. You heard? In the part where he was like, shout out, but I'm this bitch. He was talking about Sos Moolah. If you go listen to the old snippet, he clearly say Sos Moolah. Now, back to Comethazine and Sos. They got the beefing online, and Sos Moolah started trolling with the little Disney interview and even dropped the diss track named Bosky K. And for context, Bosky was like Comethazine's whole brand at the time. He had a whole album series under the name Bosky. And I guess the beef was affecting it so, so bad, he got on IG Live talking about the situation. Little peasant, little... And you know, you know what the funny thing about this whole sh is? I don't be starring with nobody. I be minding my business. I be minding my business, my nigga. Always on my. That's the only reason I'm trolling. And I'm trolling because this ain't no rap beef. This bitch. Ain't gonna ever do nothing to me. You can't ever have a, sh a show in New York. I, I dare you, nigga. I can't flock the f up, nigga. Dead. I'm not one of these SoundCloud FaceTime niggas. Like, you know what I'm saying? Shit, man, nigga, little, little army boy. Like, all you gotta do, my nigga, is look at the pics from when he was a kid, and then go look at my pictures when I was a kid. We come from two totally different backgrounds, my boy. Dead. See, I can't beef with no like that, bro. That nigga's a bitch. But problems ain't just stop at beef. People started to realize something about Comethazine. Something people realize about a lot of rappers we listen to today. He sounded the same on every single project, every single feature, every single song. And it wasn't nothing different about it. People got tired of the same old Tay-K sound and started to distance themselves from Comethazine music. And it was obvious, he went from millions and millions of views to not nearly as many. People say one of the main reasons behind his disappearance is lack of people caring about him. People wasn't asking for new music how they was at one point. I used to with Comethazine so heavy back in the day. However, I feel like dude is literally making the same song over and over and over, rapping the same way, like there's no progression. Comethazine in the SoundCloud days was amazing 
but I think it might have been just that his his sound was new, right? But the fact that he didn't change up the flow whatsoever, and we get mad at artists like Uzi, Trippy for changing up their flow. But maybe, just maybe, if they hadn't changed their flow, we wouldn't have been fans anymore. Because I have surely fallen out of being a fan of a Comethazine. I honestly do not give one about his Comethazine project. He said, sorry, Comethazine vocal rappers. I heard, I heard from when I was out in the, the mix. <laughs> it's not necessarily always the fact that Comethazine don't rappers. It's just that this dude always tries, like, in real life, the way he raps, apparently he, like, acts like he's that hard dude, but, but he's actually soft or something. And I'm not trying to diss because I'm not involved in this. And if you look in his past, on multiple occasions, he done been real disrespectful to fans just asking him about music. It was one situation that went viral that I can't even read y'all the messages. He was just talking that crazy. But a fan hit him up and was like, why'd you put this song instead of this song on the album and he just start calling them all type of names then another fan page even had this to say at this point i lost all of my hope bro refuses to communicate with fans it's almost like he hates us drake dropping the same week so he elfed this is about to be the lowest we ever seen comethazine name and that was a fan page saying that that was a fan who don't do nothing but obsess about comethazine that said this about so that's really showing you the mentality of the fans then if you take one look at his reddit it's all people saying the same thing he don't care or respect his fans and that's a sad thing to see because he do got potential like it was a point in time where me and my homeboy we was listening to comethazine heavy i'm talking about every time he dropped we was sending each other album we were sending each other songs that was hard but eventually he did fall out of my rotation now it was partial because his music didn't change but also he ain't dropped the album since like 2022 granted it was late 2022 but still we in 2024 you an artist that's not solidified in the game and you taking this long to drop music and you know i'm gonna test my homeboy i'm gonna ask him if he's still listening to comethazine I'm put the messages on screen but his career kind of ended up in the same position as the artist from my last video these rappers went from being so hot to left behind in the shadow of the artist that put them on in the first place and what really happened to all these sidekick artists is on screen right now 